I wanted to wait for some people to gather, uh, but I don't have any great news for you. If you've been reading the newspapers, the news is all pretty bad, right? And if you saw the diocese newsletter, uh, I think all the healthcare leaders in Pima County wrote an open letter saying, please avoid mass gatherings because the hospital capacity is just going away. And so we're open this weekend. I don't know what Bishop's gonna do this coming week. In the past, the last two times we shut down, it was not as bad as it is now. But I think there's just such a desire to be open for Christmas that, uh, that I know that's having an effect on how, how we think. But uh, St. Tom's, you probably saw that they shut down this weekend. I don't know if you saw that uh, because there was an exposure of the two of the priests. Um, to someone who is in the sacristy and the priest had come off and, you know, we're not wearing masks. When we say mass, they walk through the sacristy and they stopped and talked to the volunteers for 10 minutes. It counts as an exposure. And so uh, this is the kind of thing that it's just so difficult to deal with in a parish environment. So my only thing that I wanted to do, I'm gonna do this at all the masses tomorrow, is just tell you to be alert and so if we send you an email this week, you know what, what's going on. What we've been doing is Father, uh, stop it, Father Rudy. I was going to say Father Callistus because I had him in my head. Father Rudy and I have been hearing confessions and handing up communion on the side of the church. Um, and so uh, if, if anything else, we would still uh, be doing that. Uh, hopefully. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up. The numbers from last week, last weekend, were 100 people lower than they were the weekend before Thanksgiving. And so um, that has continued just to go down because I think people rightfully are concerned. Uh, but I just want you to know what, what's going on. Okay? So keep us in your prayers. And I tell you, I pray for you every day.
Welcome to St. Mark's for today's celebration of the third Sunday in Advent. And now, please join in welcoming our celebrant, Father Rudy Ofori. <laughs> Welcome to this evening Holy Mass. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters gathered at God's table, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my ways, in what I've done and what I'll fail to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, we see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad, glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm 
My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? so we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, making straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize? if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is no one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandals strip I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
God is good all the time. We heard God's prophet pro proclaim great joy to the Jews that their exile was over. In the response, we heard Mary's expression of joy when she visited her cousin Elizabeth. We heard St. Paul in the second reading tells us to rejoice always. I would like to describe each of these with a little more detail. The prophet in today's first reading announced the Babylonian exile was over. Great news. The people, for the most part, were somehow glad to be set free. It wasn't an easy time for them. After 50 years, they were pretty well settled in Babylon. They had jobs and homes there. Their homes in Israel had been leveled 50 years earlier, and there wasn't much to return to. Nothing remained of their beloved temple, which the Babylonians had destroyed, except a hill covered with rocks and weeds. The prophet had a real challenge encouraging God's people to rejoice in their return home. It was only by having faith in what God was doing for them that they could not that they could have joy. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had every reason to be anxious and depressed. Here she was suddenly going to be a mother, her husband to be Joseph, was about to break off the engagement. In a few months, she would suffer disgrace among her family and friends when it became obvious. She was going to have a child without being married. In that society, she would have no way to support herself financially without a husband. Yet, we hear, as she visits her cousin Elizabeth after the annunciation, how she rejoices, not in her misery, but in what God was about to do. As we know from St. Paul's writings, his job as a missionary was not an easy one. He tells us in his second letter to the Corinthians that he was beaten numerous times, put in jail, faced angry mobs, had gone without eating or sleeping, faced death, been shipwrecked three times, suffered from cold and pain, and faced dangers from robbers. His own people even supposed Christians, yet he writes to the, he writes to the Thessalonians, Rejoice always again, rejoice. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks, why? Because this is the will of God for you. If it is God's will for us that we be joyful, God will certainly help us if we choose to be. Paul is saying we can choose to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves, or we can choose to be joyful even in difficult circumstances. We can let, we can let self pity control our lives, or we can choose through faith and with God's help to rejoice. If we can believe in the great things God has done, and is about to do for us, we have 
reason to rejoice. Even though life is sometimes burdensome and the economy is bad and there are threats all over the world, even though there are a lot of things we can complain about and a lot of things that could be better, we have more reasons to rejoice than any people who ever lived on this planet. We enjoy wonderful physical blessings and our freedom. We have the benefits of modern medicine and conveniences. Yet, through joy in our hearts, must still go deeper than all the things we have around us, for we must rejoice in what God is doing in our life. St. John the Baptist tells us in today's Gospel, there is no one among you whom you do not recognize. This is true. By faith we know he is among us. But if we could really recognize him, we would be so full of joy, we would be as if we were in heaven. That is why St. Paul again would tell us, rejoice. God's plans for us are grandiose. His light and love so wonderful. If we could experience it all, we would be mystics, which wouldn't be all bad. But most of us have to live in faith and hope until God's kingdom is realized in us. Like the people who heard about in today's readings, we rejoice like they did in faith. Have a wonderful evening. Shall we please rise? I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, born of the Holy Spirit, and was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and he was buried. He rose again the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom has no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess in my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead for the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, let us bring our needs before God our Father, no matter how difficult this seems to us. For our church, that our words and actions may testify to the light so that others may realize the goodness of God in what we say and do. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our Jewish brothers and sisters who have begun celebrating Hanukkah, the festival of lights, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our 
for prophets of our time who boldly proclaim the truth as they stand up for what is right and good and worthy. We pray to the Lord. That we may heed the words of St. Paul and retain what is good and refrain from every kind of evil as we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. For St. Mark parishioners, the Humple family, the Shaker family, and the repose of the soul of Mark Martinson and Richard Brown, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us always rejoice even in difficult moments. God is still with us. On this note, let us call on our mother to be at our side always. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask all these to Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mysteries and powerfully accomplished for us in your saving work, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we there to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Ho holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, dear, for this grace we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold the lamp of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we to be at the supper of the lamp. Let us pray. <clears throat> we implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us from our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Father.
Jesus.